All right, all right, all right, Mr. 500 back. Mr. Delgado doing it big. And guess what? We're going to be doing some more problems. We're going to be focusing on the geometry. We're going to be focusing on that question 50, which we like to see a lot. And usually every single test has something like this. That's why we got to make sure we could handle this. All right, so we're going to be looking at some Sokotoa problems, all right? Some Sokotoa problems. This has to do with trigonometry. The end, Sokotoa is where it's at. And we're going to be learning a little bit about that stuff, okay? So we're going to be doing some Sokotoa questions. And hopefully you get to learn a little bit, all right? See you again. If you kind of know what you're doing, well, just download the, um, just download it. What do you mean download it? Yeah, download the file. And just check, you know, uh, do the problems. And just check to see if you are on point, all right? Notice these problems have to deal with right triangles so that pythagorean theorem and that sokotoa have a lot in common here you know we're gonna have to use some knowledge that we've already learned like that this side the side opposite side opposite of the right triangle the right angle i apologize right angle is called the hypotenuse okay we gotta already know that now that stands for the h in these trigonometric ratios and yes they're ratios here okay so we're going to be doing some proportionality here that's what this really is it's trigonometry okay and their trigonometric ratios what they're used for is to calculate missing sides if you have at least one side and an angle of reference okay you could also calculate a missing angle not the 90 degree angle because we already know one's going to be 90 degrees it's a right triangle but we're going to be calculating at least one of the angles using two sides given to us. This is a ratio. It's basically setting up a, like a proportion. It's pretty interesting stuff here. All right. So as you can see, I already got my hypotenuse drawn. And I got my little angle of reference right here. This is me looking all cool. Look at that. Look at that guy right there. Yeah, boy. Yeah, you can't see a little, you can see a little happy face on me. Yeah, I mean, I'm slouching over as you can see. But, um... That angle of reference here is going to be used in these ratios. All right. So now that I've drawn myself here, you could label some of these other sides. For example, this from now on is going to be called the adjacent. Adjacent means it's going to be next to. It's the leg that is touching this angle of reference. It's the leg that is side by side to it. Okay. It's adjacent to it. Now, this one over here is called the opposite. And it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it's on the opposite side of the triangle. So, of course, it's going to be the opposite. All right. So in this problem here, the way it's set up, we got ourselves the hypotenuse. We're looking for the adjacent. There's only one ratio that makes sense. Opposite. Sorry, it's not being used here. Boom, boom. Cross that thing out. The adjacent hypotenuse. And that means we're going to be using the trigonometric ratio of cot. All right. So how do you set this up? Well, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up. It means that, that we're gonna use the cosine, cosine. Now, if you don't know where these buttons are, look, you gotta bust out your calculator here. And of course, every calculator is different, but the cosine, and you know, it's gonna be right here. As you can see, it's right here, cosine. Now there's a sine button here. Of course, it doesn't say sine, but we call it the sine, okay? This stands for that little S you can see over here on that top left, okay? Top, it's the, the first one I wrote down. The C is cosine, and the T, well, right there for tan, like a nice little tan you get at the beach. Nah, I'm just messing with you, man. It starts for tangent, okay? Tangent. These are the ratios that we're going to be using in all of these problems, okay? So now I know that I'm using ka. I'm going to write the cosine, cosine of 28 degrees. Very important that your calculator is in degree modes when you do this problem. Now, we're going to go ahead and put that over 1 because at the end of the day, cosine of the angle is always on one side of the trigonometric ratio, but we always like to put it over 1, you know, because this is a proportional relationship. Now, the adjacent, as you can see here, I mean, I'm pointing to it right there. You can see it's going to be the numerator, okay? So we're going to have to put that x right there, all right? As you can see, the h right here, this little h right here, matches up with this so we're gonna put that right here okay so we're gonna go ahead and put five seven eight five nine and ultimately 
all we got to do is set up the proportion set up the proportion okay we want to isolate this x we want to put this x by itself so the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to multiply both sides by five seven eight five nine we're going to multiply both sides by that and if we remember with our algebra stuff if we remember anything from algebra inverse operations and stuff whatever you do to one side you got to do to the other side okay so what happens is that this and this cancel each other out and now we're left with this beautiful equation that goes ahead and gives us this answer to this problem we're going to do the cosine of 28 degrees and we're going to multiply that by five seven eight five nine and that's going to give us the answer for x so let's go ahead and bust out that calculator here i'm going to go ahead and punch in that 28 degrees remember make sure that calculator is in degree mode if you don't know how to get in degree mode well the mode's right here you hit that mode button you hit that mode button and of course you select number one for degree but my calculator is already in degree mode so we're good to go okay so we're gonna put 28 degrees then i'm gonna hit the cosine button immediately okay i end up with this number just so you could see it just so you could follow along just in case i end up with 0.883 or 8.83 times 10 to the negative first but we're not done here all we did was figure out that all we did was figure out that so now we need to multiply it by the hypotenuse in this case it's five seven eight five nine we hit multiply boom bada bing bada boom we call it a day that's it that's all it is we got ourselves our answer our answer is going to be 5.11 times 10 to the fourth power we just did some geometry stuff right here some trigonometric ratios that's all it is that's all it is if you want to write it in standard form we got 51,100 that's it that's all there is to it all right so let's go ahead and take a look at another problem here all right all right all right notice this one's a little different it's a little set up a little different but it's gonna be the same exact thing we see a problem 50 we see that problem 50 right here and what should be going in your mind boom boom problem 50 write down those ratios write down those ratios we got so we got ka notice for these problems I always like to write this stuff down because at the end of the day, the more you write down, the easier it is for you to remember these things. And you guys got to remember. I'm not the one taking the test. You're taking the test. So that's why we got to be on point at all times. Notice how the angle of reference right here, we draw ourselves right there. Bam, bam, bam. Bam. bam, bam. With that happy face, you know what I'm saying. Because I'm a happy guy. You know what I'm saying. You got to be a happy girl guy. You know what I'm saying. So that's why you got to be happy when you do these problems, man. So we got this angle of reference right here. Again, we got the hypotenuse. Bam, it's hip to it. It's got that hypotenuse hip. And then we got this adjacent right here. Yet again, we got the opposite over here. We ain't using it in this problem because it's not given to us and we're not going to use it. Notice though, notice, we're not looking for a side here. We're actually looking for the angle. So this is going to be a real interesting problem when we set it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this bad boy up. As you can see, we got the hypotenuse. We got ourselves the adjacent. We're going to use ka. Ka, again, now we're not always using ka. It just, it just ended up being like that in this problem. But we're going to end up finding the cosine of, uh-oh, we're not putting a degree there. We're putting x. We're putting x. And now we're going to have to set this up. Okay, so my adjacent is going to be 3.98. And we're going to go ahead and put it as a numerator. The denominator of this is going to be 4.72. And remember, this is always over 1, okay? But we want to isolate the x in this problem, okay? So what we can automatically do, I mean, we don't need that 1. We don't need that. I mean, it's going to be gone at him. Anyway, so, you know, we don't have to multiply both sides by 1. We could just eliminate it, okay, in this case. Check this out. x is almost isolated, but it ain't. But it ain't. We got to do the opposite of cosine to isolate it, to isolate it. And there's a button on your calculator. It's underneath those trigonometric ratio buttons that I showed you. It's not really not underneath them. It's one of the, the modes that you could touch. It's the blue keys. As you can see, we got A sine. I mean, I'm trying to put it right there. Probably trying to put it right there. A sine. You guys see it right there? Let me move it around. Let me move it right there. Got A sine. We got A cos, which stands for A cosine, and A tangent. Basically, these are the inverses of these trigonometric ratios and and what happens good way i like to remember it is that the a stands for looking for the angle okay that's a good way to do it i've seen some calculators where they have a negative one power on top of the ratios these little you know 
sine cosine tangent could also work like that you know on the ti inspire different calculators like that graphing calculators they go ahead and put those kind of things but you know here we don't need any of that we don't need any of that so we're gonna go ahead and bust this stuff out here okay now uh oh man it wasn't working but i had it backwards no duh okay so let's get it all right so um to cancel out this cosine we're gonna have to do the a cos to this right here but whatever you do to the left we gotta do to the right now of course i don't have enough space but that's what's gonna happen here so notice this a cos cancels each other out but we still gotta leave that a cos over here so what happens is that x degrees is now going to equal to the a cos of 3.98 over 4.72 all right so we're gonna go ahead and be able to do this real easy on our calculator all right so check this out here we're gonna go ahead and bust out i'm gonna go ahead and start punching it in 3.98 enter 4.72 we get divide remember always do what's inside the parentheses first immediately when you do that you hit blue eight coast uh, uh, uh. call it a day we got ourselves our answer our answer for this problem is going to be 32.5 degrees we don't need to put the degree symbol but just so you know or of course scientific notation 3.25 times 10 to the first that's it that's it we don't need to put the degree symbol because if you look carefully they already tell us that this problem is going to be in degrees okay so we don't have to worry about that in this problem but you know we're gonna end up doing it and uh, we're gonna pop it out of there, man. We're gonna pop it out of there. It's gonna be real nice, real nice here, okay? So anyways, let's go ahead and get this. Let's get this. Okay, next problem, next problem here. Let's the next problem. All right, now we got this triangle. It's drawn a different way. Don't matter, don't matter. We still got ourselves right here. Angle of reference, drawn ourselves right here. We still got the one opposite of the right angle. It's called the hypotenuse, okay? Since I'm over here, the one next to me is the adjacent. And this one on the opposite side, well, we actually, we're going to use it in this problem. We got ourselves the opposite. We're looking for the adjacent. Remember, these trigonometric ratios. Now, of course, some people don't write it as a ratio. Some people write so, ka, to. And at the beginning of the little lesson here, it actually said that at the top. So, I mean, that's what it really means here. That's what it really means. So, in this problem, we got the opposite. We got the adjacent. We're gonna use Toa because that has the opposite and the adjacent. So let's set this up. So we got the tangent of 21 degrees and we're gonna go ahead and put that over one just in case, just in case, you know, we gotta put it over one. We may use it, okay? It just depends on what we're looking for. The opposite here is gonna be seven, nine, eight, nine and we're gonna go ahead and put that over X. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. We might need to use that one right here. Now, the reason why I put that one is because some students, they like looking at this and immediately think of this as a proportional relationship. And for some students, the easiest way to do proportion is to cross multiply and then divide. But notice we're going to start with seven, nine, eight, nine, multiply it by one. All right. And then divide this answer by the tangent of 21 degrees. Now, this is why it's very important because in the other ways that you do cross multiplication and division and stuff like that, order matters when you divide. And I've had some students who set this up like a cross multiplication problem and they end up putting in the tangent of 21 first and dividing that by 7,989. And that gives you an answer that's just not going to make sense. We ain't going to get a good answer here. And it's just not a reasonable answer. Remember, you got to remember your rules here. We got to understand reasonableness. Like, does the answer make sense? Obviously, this is going to have some answer close to thousands or so. Because, I mean, it's, it's 7989. I mean, we got, we're going to have something bigger than that. You know, just because if you know the rules of triangles, you know, 21 degrees is going to be the smallest angle of this triangle because this is 90. And of course, this side's going to be 69 degrees. So this adjacent should be larger than the 7989. But that's reasonableness and you'll end up getting there really soon. So in this problem, really, we're going to go ahead and do 7989. I mean, if you do the algebra here, we multiply both sides by 7989. Okay. And, um... Actually, what we should do is multiply both sides by x. 
So what happens? We multiply both sides by x. The x's cancel, and now we're left with x times the tangent of 21. This is if we you know you were doing some of the algebra stuff. And it's never, never, look, I'm a big fan of algebra. This is how we get good, and we gotta get good. That's what I'm talking about. So, you know, next step after that, we, we, we did that because we don't ever want this x as a denominator, okay? We don't ever want that x as a denominator. Next step is that we're gonna divide both sides by the tangent of 21. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. And guess what? We end up with the actual legit way, algebraic way of setting this up. We got the x is now equal to 7,989 divided by the tangent of 21 degrees. That's how you set this up. But of course, if you just want to set it up like a proportion, cross multiply divide, hey, that's up to you. Don't matter. What does matter is you learn the math, you put it in the calculator correctly, and there you go. We call it a day. So I put 7,989, enter. 21 then I hit 10 immediately divided and guess what we got we got ourselves a completely reasonable answer we got 2.08 times 10 to the fourth or if you want to write in standard notation we got 20,800 and that's it we call it a date that's it that's it that's all we got to do all right next problem next problem I'm gonna go a little faster here because you know we've seen different ways to set this up and at the end of the day it's all the same angle of reference hypotenuse adjacent opposite all right so we got the opposite and the adjacent we're looking for the opposite and we have the adjacent given to us so we're gonna go ahead and use so katoa now if you got to make a guess which one are we gonna use I'm waiting now nah, I'm just messing around man I'm not waiting here Let, we're gonna go ahead and use toa all right, so let's check this out, man. We got Toa up in this. So we're gonna do the tangent of 65 degrees, and we're gonna go ahead and put x over 5218. Multiply both sides by 5218, and guess what we end up with? We end up with x isolated, and we're gonna go ahead and cancel these out. And so really the step is 5218, enter, 65, tan, multiply. Look, at the end of the day, with multiplication order doesn't matter I mean you could put the tan of 65 first then multiply it by 5218 don't matter don't matter but division matters order matters so that's why we end up having to do what we got to do so I put 65 tanned it and now I have 2.14 I'm gonna go ahead and hit multiply multiply with that 5218 and guess what we got ourselves an answer of 1.12 times 10 to the fourth or 11,200 call it a day all right hopefully I mean you know look these problems aren't difficult but you just gotta get the hang of them you know, and then you know they just get easy they just get easy all right so let's take a look here we got ourselves what we got ourselves our angle of reference you know of course I'm drawing myself drawing myself we got the hypotenuse right there we got the adjacent right here and then we got the opposite right there we got the OPP yeah you know me <laughs> look uh, that might be a little too old for you a little bit of old reference right there, but uh If you got it cool, and if you don't got it, we'll get with it. That's what I got to say about that <laughs> Anyways, we got uh what we got the opposite we got the hypotenuse we got so all day What do you mean? So so what now? Nah, I'm talking about so I'm talking about that trigonometric ratio We're gonna do the sine of X degrees. We're gonna go ahead and put that 189 as my numerator we got 505 as the denominator it looks like an SOS yeah because these other competitors are gonna be needing some help when they go ahead and get you creaming them on these problems and that's what I'm talking about remember we're looking for the angle remember that little technique think of that a sign think of that a sign right there think of that a sign think of that a sign that a sign means you're looking for that angle these cancel and now we got X degrees is equal to the a sign or inverse sign of 189 over 505 so let's set it up we got 189 enter we got 505 we hit the vibe 505 we hit the vibe okay sorry about that you know i got a little song in my mem my little mind right here i think mozart just gets me in this groove man Mozart gets me in the groove but anyways we got good answer here and it's very reasonable 22.0 or 2.20 
times 10 to the first. Okay, what's a reasonable answer for the angle? Well, of course, three angles of a triangle add up to 180. We already know what this bad boy is right there. We already know that, that's 90 degrees. So both of these angles have to add up to 90. So really, anything 90, anything less than 90 is very reasonable. And of course, you know, it, it, it could happen where it's 89.9 or even rounding off to 90.0, especially if the other angle is extremely small. I mean, but if you get 100 or something, you get a negative, that is not reasonable at all. So we just gotta know reasonableness because at the end of the day, I want you to learn the math. And not just learn calculator tricks, let's learn that math, let's get it, let's make sure we could do it, you know what I'm saying? All right, so let's go ahead and check this out. We got ourselves our angle of reference right here. We got the hypotenuse, the hip, the hypotenuse, because we hip to it. The opposite on this side and the adjacent, okay? We got to know our vocabulary here. We know the vocabulary is going to be piece of cake. We're going to use so, ka, toa. You see that problem 50? Get with it. I mean, that's all it is. So, as you can see, we got the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse. Now, I'm just messing with you. It's called the hypotenuse or whatever. You know, I just thought of something, a little sketch I heard a little while back, but you know what, I ain't gonna bring it up right now. I ain't gonna bring it up. But you know what, there's a lot of jokes that have been made about right triangles because they're hip to be square, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, we got ourselves the adjacent, we're looking for the hypotenuse, we got ourselves our angle, so we're using ka. So we got the cosine of 73 degrees is now gonna be equal to 5721 over x. All right, so this is this problem right here where you could think of it again. We got our numerator, so we're essentially going to divide here if you want to think about it that way so we can solve for x. So we're going to go ahead and divide. We got 5721 divided by the cosine of 73 degrees, and that's going to give us our answer for x. So let's go ahead and set it up. 5721, enter. 73 cosine divide. And that's it. I mean, it's a reasonable answer. We're looking for that hypotenuse. I got a huge answer. 1.96 times 10 to the 4th. Or 19,600. But it, it seems reasonable, considering that this is the adjacent here. You know, the opposite is larger than this adjacent because this 73 degrees is much greater than this side, which has to be, hopefully you said it, 17 degrees. So the smallest side across from the smallest angle you know right here this medium leg i mean the larger leg is across the larger angle and of course 90 degrees here is always across from the hypotenuse okay so it's all about reasonableness it's reasonableness when you see that stuff is reasonable piece of cake now look they like to draw triangles a little different like this one right here if you don't know your measurements you may think this is an isosceles right triangle two of these sides look very similar to each other but it ain't it ain't we use sokotoa we use sokotoa so we got ourselves the hypotenuse right here always opposite a right angle the adjacent is what we're looking for in this problem as you can see and they're giving us the opposite so there's only one of these that we're gonna use we got so we got ka we got toa and guess what we're using here guess what we're using we're using toa opposite adjacent let's set it up all right so we got the tan of 48 degrees oh what happened to my a i think i'm pressing my undo button on accident we got tan of 48 degrees is now going to be equal to 208 divided by x all right so here it is just again just again so what ends up happening when you got the numerator here i mean a good way to remember it a good way to think about it is really we're gonna get that 208 divided by the tangent of 48 degrees and we end up with our solution our x our missing side so let's do it let's do it we got 208 we hit enter 48 tan it divide I mean, it's close. I mean, it's reasonable. I got 187. Or scientific notation style, 1.87 times 10 to the second. Yeah, buddy. But see, that's so Katoa. Easy problems. Easy problems. It's all trigonometric ratios. You know, when you get older, when you get to geo, you might actually see the unit circle. You might see where this stuff comes from. It's uh, they're pretty interesting here. But as of right now, we just gotta know that so Katoa works. It's a technique that will always give us one of the sides 
when you're given a side in an angle of reference, or you could figure out the angle of reference when given two sides. And this always works for right triangles, okay, just so you know. All right, let's set this bad boy up. We got ourselves, what? We got ourselves, whoa, what kind of guy is that? I mean, I don't know what kind of guy that is. I mean, let's draw some pants on the guy or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, we got ourselves our opposite right here. Remember, it's the opposite leg. We got ourselves the adjacent leg. And of course, we got our hypotenuse right there. That's what we got. We got. We got it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and use our trigonometric ratio. So, ka, toa. Uh-oh. And we're going to go ahead and uh, see what we got to use, okay? So in this problem here, we got the adjacent. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. We got the adjacent here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We got the adjacent. Now we got the... Um, do, 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 do. It's not letting me click, man. It's not letting me click this bad boy, man. It's like it wants me to click on this right here. Well, anyways. So we got the adjacent. We got ourselves the opposite. And so let's set this bad boy up. Okay, so we got the adjacent. We got the opposite. We're going to be using toe. So we got the tan of 68 degrees the tangent is 68 degrees and we're going to go ahead and put the x as our numerator and the adjacent is our denominator here okay so if we remember that we got to multiply both sides by 541 to cancel out the 541 and essentially what happens here is that we got 541 times the tangent of 68 i mean that's just the algebra working for us that's just the algebra okay so in this problem we got going on here we're gonna go ahead and set this up. Okay, I don't know why I deleted that one, but let's go ahead and do it. We got ourselves, what, 68, enter, tangent, right? You don't have to hit enter, I hit enter, I just made it a little, you know, but it doesn't matter. Boom, 1.34 times 10 to the third. Look, you guys might be even faster than me by now because I'm over here just trying to write on this and stuff. Hopefully, you're already setting this stuff up. I mean, you, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, you, you guys are smart people. You know what I'm saying? You're smart people. <laughs> Look, it ain't that late today. All right. But it's getting there. All right. It's getting there. So, you know, I, I get a little kooky when I've been up a little bit, you know. But, you know, I've enjoyed my break. I hopefully you've been enjoying your break. We got that Thanksgiving coming right up. So I hope you do enjoy it. Okay. Because we having a good time. And I know you guys should be having a good time not having to come to school during this break. So hopefully you check this stuff out. All right. In any case, we got our angle of reference. We got 73. We got our hypotenuse right here. We got ourselves our adjacent right here. Oh, man, I like that. I like this highlighter rubbing over this blue, creating that green. That's pretty interesting right there. A little art going on. I mean, I'm pretty surprised. But in any case, anyways, anyways. So we got the adjacent. We got the hypotenuse. Which one are we going to use? You tell me. You tell me. We're going to use Ka, man. We're going to use Ka. So we got the cosine of 73 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and put that X over 12, 12. All right, 12, 12. Remember, we got that numerator right there. We're missing the numerator. So we got to multiply both sides by 12, 12. What happens to the 12, 12s on the right side? What happens? They cancel out. Okay, whatever you do to one side, do the other side. That's why our 12, 12 got moved over. And now we can go ahead and do this problem. We're going to go ahead and set this bad boy up. We're going to do 12, 12. Oh, man, that highlighter was too much for that. <laughs> highlighter was way too much. I guess we ain't going to do Let me try the yellow one. Let's see. Let's see how it works over. There you go. Okay, they didn't cover that one. We got to do 12, 12. So 12, 12, enter. We're going to go ahead and hit 73, cosine it, and hit multiply to connect it. And now we got ourselves our answer. It's going to be what? That's right. 354. Or 3.54 times 10 to the second. Easy work. Easy clap. Easy clap. Uh-oh. I didn't know we were going to be doing some rad problems today. You know, this looks kind of radical. This looks radical. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, it's not that radical. We're not talking about square roots. We're not talking about roots of any kind. We're talking about radians, okay? We're talking about radians. Now, so here's the deal. This is the first problem. I hope you see it. I mean, of course you see it. I'm making a big old scene about it. It's the first problem where our angle of reference does not have the degree symbol. It has a rad right after it. So guess what that means? We're going to bust out our handy-dandy calculator. 
go ahead and bust out that mode right there and we're gonna have to change it to what hmm well yeah radiance mode rad mode it's a rad mode how do you know it's in rad mode well it says rad at the top because we doing some radical work you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh, anyways how you like my shirt it's a little kind of cool right you like that you like that little batman looking right at you yeah boy all right so let's set this up okay 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 man i'm having a little fun you can't you gotta have fun you gotta have fun. if you ain't having fun then you ain't, you ain't doing it you ain't doing it right you know what i'm saying so anyways we got ourselves our angle of reference right here now just because it says rad doesn't mean it's not an angle okay radian is a way right radians is a way that we measure angles but by their arc length you know it has to deal with circumference okay it's a kind of interesting little thing going on there you know one of these days maybe we'll talk about radians especially when we start looking at those problems that involve how to convert radians into pi and stuff like that you know a quick little thing here 180 degrees is actually equal to pi radians that's the conversion rate you know nothing wrong with learning some math okay and this math is the good math make you laugh you know what i'm saying <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> all right so anyways same old same old we got the opp right over here we got our hypotenuse right there and then we got ourselves the adjacent right here now we're not going to be using the adjacent for this problem we don't need it but it's right there labeled okay so let's go ahead and set this bad boy up we got the opposite we got the hypotenuse what are we using so so we're gonna do the sine of 0 0.367 remember that calculator's gotta be in radians mode we're gonna go ahead and make that equal to the x over 51.7 51 7 tenths okay so remember now that we got that, we got to cancel out the 51.7. Look, if you got the denominator, if you have the denominator, you're looking for the numerator, you just got to remember, we got to multiply. We got to multiply. I mean, there's a little strategies here, you know. I remember a couple of my students, come on, superstars, they went ahead and did this. Missing the one on top, we divide. You got the one on top, that means you're missing the one at the bottom, you multiply. It's a little strategy that they wrote down all the time, and that's just kind of helping them. But you know me, I like to do the math, okay? So I like to do the algebra, we got to do this crossing out. But at the end of the day, it's about how you do it, okay? It's not about me doing it, because I've been there, done that. My time is over, your time is now. So you got to make sure you could do these problems. So we got 51.7, let's hit enter. Remember, that calculator better be in rad mode. How do you know it's in rad mode? At the top, it's going to say rad at the top, okay? So it better be in that rad mode. Okay, so I got 51.7 in the calculator. Now we're gonna go ahead and put 0.367, and we're gonna immediately hit sign, and then we're gonna connect it. All right, we got ourselves our answer. Apparently the X in this problem, 1.86 times 10 to the first, or 18.6, okay? Hopefully you're seeing both methods. Hopefully you're getting better at this, because you know, I'm trying, I'm trying here, okay? Next problem. We got ourselves our angle of reference. We got ourselves drawn right there. We got ourselves the adjacent right here. We see that right angle, and that's our hypotenuse. You know what I'm saying? The hippopotamus. Yeah, big, big, big hippo. It's not a hippopotamus. It's the hypotenuse. But you know what it is. As mathematicians, we like to have fun. We got to have fun. I mean, because you know what? We deal with the truth here and the truth. It's funny sometimes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, anyways, let's go ahead and set this up. Which one are we using? Which one are we using? Which one are we using? Well, there you go. We got the adjacent and the hypotenuse. We're going to be using cos. So we got the cosine of x degrees. Notice there's a degree symbol here. So what mode we got to be in? That's right, degree mode. Well, I mean, I hope you said degree mode. I mean, if you didn't say degree mode, are you waiting for me to give you the answer? That that ain't really doing it. That ain't really doing it. But we're setting it up right here because remember, ka is cosine of the angle over, I mean, equals to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I gotta make sure my calculator is in degree mode. Put it back degree mode. All right. Remember, we're using the we're missing the angle of reference, so we're gonna have to use that a cos on both sides. A cos and the cosine cancel each other out, but A cos on this side 
is what gives us our answer. So really x degrees is equal to our inverse cosine and then we're going to go ahead and put 37720 just setting it up over 82100. Then we just go ahead and bust it on the calculator. 37720 enter 82100 divide and then we go ahead and use 8 cos find the angle 62.6 or 6.26 ooh hoo, hoo, hoo. You better not do that on the day of the test. I mean, it happens to me. I just, you just saw it. You just saw it. Sometimes we put the numbers in reverse, but I caught it. You need to catch it because I'm not going to be there watching your back in this test. All right. And you know what? I mean, I want to be the bearer of bad news, but I've had kids not go to state because of one question. And you don't want it just because you wrote the number wrong. And I'm glad I caught myself because, you know, we all make mistakes. That's, that's it's life. We make mistakes. But, you know. Hey, what mode are we using? What mode? What mode? What mode? Oh, you got it. You better believe it. It's that rad mode time. But you better make sure that you catch yourself. We all make mistakes. Sometimes when we get put under the pressure, 30 minute test, do 80 problems, we make tiny mistakes. But you know what? It's all good. It's all good. It's a learning experience. Remember, we're here to learn. We're here to get better. And I hope you're getting better because, you know, I just want you to do the best you could be. Because, you know, that's just a gift from me. All right, so anyways, let's go ahead and set this up. We got ourselves our angle of reference right here. Bam, 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 bam. And now we got ourselves the adjacent right here. We got ourselves our hypotenuse right there. Are we using the OPP? We're using the opposite? No, we're not. But it's there. It's there. Just, you know, it's always there. We could use it. Honestly, there's a lot of ways we could. I mean, there's, there's technically some problems that we may see. I mean, they could easily ask you to find a perimeter of this. Figure out the missing side, use that, store it in our calculator, then figure out the other side and then add them all. You know, so there's turn, there are problems where you may have to do a double Sokotoa or you may have to do a Sokotoa into Pythagorean theorem. I mean, it's just what it is. But for right now, we're just doing the basics here, okay? So we're doing rad mode. We got ourselves the adjacent. We're looking for the hypotenuse. We're using cosine. So we're gonna do the cosine of pi over seven radians is now equal to 5251 over x. All right, you remember that little trick? You got the numerator, you're dividing. You got the denominator, you're multiplying. Okay, just this what it is. So we're going to end up doing 5251 over cosine of pi over 7 radians okay i almost caught myself saying degrees so we can't make those mistakes you know what i'm saying you can't you can't be in degree mode you gotta be in that radians mode that rad mode we're gonna do some rad stuff right here anyways five two five one enter we're gonna go ahead and hit yellow pi seven divide cosine it and then well when i cosigned it i got 9.01 times 10 to the negative first so hopefully you're on the right track then we hit divide to connect it Guess what we got? We got ourselves a good answer, reasonable answer. It's got to be bigger than this one, and it sure is. We got 5830, 5830, or 5.83 times 10 to the third power. All right, so that's what it is. I mean, it's easy work. It's easy clap. Easy, easy clap. All right, so we see that degree mode. We bust it out. Bust out degree mode. We got ourselves the hypotenuse. We got ourselves our angle of reference which helps us identify the correct legs. Here we got the adjacent, and here we got the opposite. Okay, notice that we got scientific notation in here. So look, I don't know what's easier for you. 722 and six zeros, or 7.22e to the eighth. I mean, whatever is easier for you. But we gotta understand, really, that we're using cosine. We got the cosine of 18 degrees is gonna be equal to our adjacent, which is 7.22, times 10 to the eighth over x. So really, we have to rewrite this and we gotta end up noticing that it's gonna end up turning into 7.22 times 10 to the eighth over cosine of 18 degrees. And that is gonna give us our answer for x. So let's go ahead and type it in. 7.22 e to the eighth, enter, we got 18 Hit cosine immediately. I got 0.951 or 9.51 times 10 to the negative first. We hit divide. And that's a completely reasonable answer. Remember, we're looking for the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse should be bigger, and it sure is. We got 7.59 times 10 to the 8th. 
look for those people who want to do standard notation i would not recommend it for this problem for me it's just easier to write that but you could write seven five nine one two three four five six zero whatever works for you but me personally personally as a coach i would tell you anything over five as an exponent write the scientific notation I, I don't even mess around with the negatives too much negative exponents i mean i only go maybe up to two or three i mean that's just a, but that's that's me it's not about me it's about you it's about what you do all right so we see that rad mode immediately rad mode you see the radians you see the rad bust out the rad mode all right we got our angle of reference right here uh oh we don't want that i mean that's not what i'm talking about we, it's kind of hard to draw a guy using a highlighter i mean it could be done i mean i'm gonna find a way but i ain't gonna do it today all right so we got our angle of reference right here we got our hypotenuse right there we got the adjacent right there are we using the opposite no we are not but it's there it's there just in case okay so we're gonna use ka. yeah that's right ka. all right we're gonna use cosine of x is equal to the adjacent which is 62 over 162 it's in rad mode now remember what i said about this we're not looking for 180 degrees for a total triangle I said 180 degrees is now pi radians. So our answer here is going to be less than half of around 3.4 ish. Why? Because half of 180 is 90 degrees. So we already got that 90 degrees over here with that right angle, remember? And half of pi is about 1.57, you know? So our answer has got to be less than that. And that's how we could tell if this is a reasonable answer when we get it done. So. You also got to remember we're looking for that angle. So we have to inverse cosine it. We're going to A cosine it, cancel it out. And on this side, we got the A cosine as well. So let's go ahead and really set it up. We got X radians is going to be equal to the inverse cosine function of 62 over 162. All right, let's see what we get. I'm going to go ahead and 62 enter, 162 divide. We're going to go ahead and do A cos. And you know, it's a reasonable answer. I mean, hopefully you got a reasonable answer. I got 1.18 or 1.18 times 10 to the zero. Of course, which one's easier to write? 1.18. But you got to be able to see it. You got to, what the heck are we, what? It's messing around. See, look, this is one of these complicated problems that may intimidate people but it's really not that bad. We gotta go back to understanding area of a right triangle. We're gonna have to work backwards a tiny bit and we're gonna have to figure out that other leg. But once we do that, we could use a trigonometric ratio and we could find the angle of reference, okay? So this is another problem right here. I know it looks crazy, it's not a 50, it's a 74, but it's so toe all day. We're looking for the angle of reference. It's a right triangle. You gotta be able to see it. it's a right triangle. We got the right angle. They gave us a leg, we're looking for an angle of reference, and they gave us a way to find one of the other sides, in this case, the other leg, using the area. So, let's go ahead and set this bad boy up here, okay? Let's go ahead and do it. So, we got ourselves, what? Area formula first is equal to base times height divided by two. They gave us the base in this problem. Here's the base, okay? We're looking for the height. So what we gotta do is first off, multiply both sides by two. All right, the twos cancel. And then we're gonna divide by the base. And the bases cancel on the right. So we're really left with this new formula that gives us the height, the other leg. It's gonna be 2a over b equals the height. It's a little bit of algebra. You got to get used to it, especially you want to get that algebra class, especially when you take it early in, high, in junior high. You got to be able to do this kind of stuff. If you could do this, oh man, you, the, the world is your oyster. That's what I'm talking about. So that's how we're going to get this height here. So let's go ahead and do that first. We got 6, 3. Uh oh. Let me show you what's up. What would be wrong with this problem here? That's right. It's in rad mode. Do I want it in rad mode? Heck no. But look, I started typing already. And what you could do immediately is hit mode and immediately change it to degree. But see, the problem is it actually already enters that number into the calculator. We're not going to use 63. We got to use that 6 
three, six, zero, three, nine, six. We're going to use all of that. Okay, so that's the first step. Then we're going to hit two multiply. I got 1.27 times 10 to the seventh. Hopefully you're following along. Then we're going to get the base, five, two, two, one, and then hit divide. And guess what? Completely reasonable answer. I got 2,440 or 2.44 times 10 to the third. Reasonable answer for the lake. Completely reasonable. It's not a negative. It's not enormous. It's not ginormous. It's a completely reasonable answer. But look, I'm going to tell you right now, you better not write that down. Look, if you're going to write this stuff down, I'm going to hit yellow show. I would not write this down. I would store it in the calculator memory. But I, if you're going to write this down, if you're going to be like this, if you're not going to heed my advice, you're going to write this down, you need to write at least six, seven digits, seven significant digits. If you want to write this down, because honestly, your calculator, one digit off. I mean, because look, we see 2,440. It's not. It's 2,436.466, and then there's other numbers after it. So, I mean, that little one, those four in the, in the ones place could already mess us up. Look, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I would have stored it. Honestly, I wouldn't have even done that. I left them in calculator memory banks. We got ourselves the adjacent right here. We got ourselves the opposite, which we just solved for. And now we're going to go ahead and set up our trigonometric ratio. It's going to be the tangent of X degrees is equal to our opposite which is currently in our calculator it's the calculator number two four four times ten to the third right it's the calculator number now you better not type that in there you better you better have left it i've left it in my memory banks and then we're gonna go ahead and divide that like it's still on my calculator here by five two two one like it's right there i'm looking at it right like i'm looking at it like i'm looking at it right there i didn't retype it it's been sitting right there so next step we see the tangent we're looking for the angle we're gonna have to go ahead and hit a tan we're gonna have to cancel out that tangent by hitting a tan cancels out but whatever you do on the left you got to do to the right and so we end up with x degrees is equal to a tan of 2.44 times 10 to the third now again it better not be it better not be you better not type that down you might get this wrong over five two two one all right so let's go ahead and set this bad boy up okay so it's still in my calculator i'm gonna hit five two two one divide boom immediately inverse tan function find the angle call it a day 2.50 times 10 to the first or 25.0 look ladies and gentlemen Sokotoa is cake it's question 50 nobody's gonna get this wrong nobody you work hard you work hard with me we're gonna do this we're gonna do it big dog style and i know you guys got it in you all right so this is mr 500 here calling it calling it and uh hopefully you're gonna be calling it but you're gonna be calling it nine points higher when you hit these problems out of the park, okay? So I hope you have yourself a good day and um, good night, whatever, whatever your time is. And, and you know, if you watch this before Thanksgiving, I hope you have a great turkey day, okay? Have a good one, all right? See you later, till next time.